Hey, and welcome to Powell's week 22, day four. So today is a strength-based workout. So you are going to need um, a few different size dumbbells. However, if you only have one set, no worries, we're gonna make it work. So whenever you're ready, go grab your dumbbells, something light, something medium, and something heavy, and then maybe right back here on the mat, and let's begin. Okay, welcome to our strength day. So I'm gonna let um, a couple moments pass before I put the workout up in the chat feature. That way everybody can be on before it gets loaded up. Uh, today is strength based. You're gonna need three different sets of weights if that's available to you. Something light, something medium, and then something heavy. So the heavy is gonna be like deadlifts and squats. The, the light weight's gonna be long levers, like front raises, stuff like that. Um, and then the medium weights are gonna be for like renegade row, bicep curls, that kind of stuff. So if you have multiple sets of weights available to you, go ahead and get them ready. And then we'll go ahead and get started with the warm up. We're actually gonna do a little bit of mobility for our warm up today. So go ahead and come to the back of your mat. You're gonna step the right foot super forward and then let that left knee melt back down. So keep your left toes tucked under, reach your left arm overhead and then reach the left arm to the right side of the room as you push your hips to the left. So you should feel a big opening through your left hip and through the left side body as you reach that arm up and over to the right side. As you do this, keep the hips pushing forward. So make sure your right hip keeps pushing forward. You have that lengthening through the left hip and through that quadricep. Stay grounded through the right foot. Keep your left toes tucked under. Slowly release. Release the left hand to the floor and now reach the right hands over to the left side of the room. Now as you do this, make sure the right knee is not falling off to the side. Keep pulling the knee so it's right over the ankle and keep the weight even between the arch of the foot and the outside edge of that foot. So now we're gonna flow between the two. So push the hips to the left as you reach to the right and then do the same as you reach to the left, push the hips to the right. So really start to build some heat and some mobility through the hips. Stay balanced, keep your core engaged and really focus on opening up the outside of the hips, the side body, and the hip flexors. One more time on each side, and then we're gonna switch sides. All right, so just step that right foot back, sweep the left leg forward. Make sure that the right knee is behind the hip, it's not under the hip, so you have that hip opening. Reach the right arm overhead, and then over to the left side of the room as you push your hips to the right. Keep your left knee over that ankle, so make sure you're not hyperextending it forward, and we're not back here either. So you've got that knee right over the ankle. Open up the side body and then switch to the other side. Make sure the left leg is not falling off to the outside edge of that foot. Plant the arch of the foot down. And then again, flow between the two. So big openings through the body. If you're doing this live, I texted the playlist, so you should be able to just open that up if you have Spotify and listen to the music on your end. If you're gonna do it on YouTube later, I am going to add music separately in its own thing. So now you should have audio through me and through the music for your workouts. One more time, each side. Slowly release. Go ahead and sit all the way onto the shins where your hips are right above the knees. Keep your ankles, um, hips distance apart. So make sure the feet aren't together, but they're lined up right behind the knee. Reach the arms forward and we're gonna sit back onto the heels and then from the hips and quadriceps, pull yourself back up. So you feel that big opening to the front side of the body, open up the hips, press hard through your shins into the floor beneath you. Make sure you're not swinging the arms to lift up. We're actually just using the lower half of the body. So make sure you're not like momentuming yourself up. Stay grounded, stay connected. One more time. And then once you're at the top, hold. Reach the hands behind you to your lower back and then use them as an assist to open the chest and the front side of the body. Once here, pull the elbows back together so they're not like super wide. We're working them back behind the body. Your hands are a support for the lower back so you can find more opening through the front side. Take your gaze up to the ceiling, open up the chest. Slowly release, have a seat, plant the hands on the floor, tuck the toes under and come into down dog. From here, balance through both feet. Take your right hand, reach the outside of the left leg and take your gaze under the left arm. As you do this, keep the weight even between the feet, so make sure you're not leaning into the left side. 
Slowly release the right hand back to the floor, switch sides. Again, take the gaze under the right, but keep the weight even between both sides of the body. Stay grounded, stay connected. Slowly release, walk the hands all the way back to the feet. Come into a fold, ball heel, step the feet together, bend the knees, and one vertebra at a time, slowly roll yourself all the way up. Okay, so I think everybody's with us. I'm gonna load up the workout into the chat for you. So go ahead and open up the chat feature on your device. And you should now see today's workout. This is because we might all be at different spots so that way you see what exercises to do. So you'll see on the first one, we have three rounds, eight to 12 repetitions. This is different than the previous two times we've done this workout. So if you're already on round three with us, you've done weeks one through 10, 11 through 20, and now you're on week 22 with me, this is going to be different. But if you have your journal, you can still try to get um, the same amount of reps. So if you were doing eight before, you're gonna still do eight now. If you're doing 12, you're still gonna do 12 of everything. Uh, remember, we're going five pounds heavier than round two, so make sure you've got some heavier weights than you did before. So renegade rows, we're in the push-ups, we're now seaming those two together. So you're gonna take your medium weights, shoulder width apart. You can do your renegades in a high plank, or if you're going super heavy, and by super heavy, I mean like 15 plus pounds, Feel free to do this in a tabletop position so you can stabilize through the hips. But we're going to do eight to 12 reps. You, you're gonna do your renegade rows first, keeping the hips nice and stable, and then your push up. So that's one. I don't know if your rep scheme is eight or 12, but somewhere between eight and 12, matching what you did the previous two times, and you're going to do those rounds. So eight to 12 of those. Your tall kneeling hammer curls. We did these in our warm up where we were in this kneeling position. So we got primed and ready for this. So it's the same setup. Feet are not together, their hips width apart. You have your weights and you're doing hammer curls. Now, as you do this, it might be tempting to start to hinge the hips and swing the hips, but really stay stable. And I'll keep guiding you through that as we get into it. And then your last one, um, we're putting that together with your press and your triceps. So that same weight, you're gonna do eight to 12 hammer curls, then you're gonna rack it up. Stay in your tall kneeling position, eight to 12 overheads. Now, if you have super, super heavy weights, feel free to drop down to one dumbbell, but if they're lighter weights, you can double them up. And then you're gonna do eight to 12 overhead tricep extensions. So those three are now kind of seen together in one longer circuit. So we're gonna start first with the renegade rows. So grab your medium weights, place them on the mat about shoulder distance apart. Go ahead and set yourself up either in your high plank or your tabletop, depending on what kind of weight you have. And go ahead and start. So eight to 12 reps, we're doing this three times through. So make sure you're rowing the weight to your back hip pocket. Slowly release, you're gonna do the other arm. Slowly release, and then you drop into a push up. Now that's one rep, all three of those moves. You're doing this eight to 12 times. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and start your workout. If you have lighter weights, you're gonna do more repetitions. If you're going heavy, you're gonna do less reps. Exhale as you row up. Exhale as you push up. So every time you're moving away from the floor, exhale. Every time you're moving towards the floor, inhale. Keep your core nice and stable so we're not rocking the hips side to side. Focusing on the chest and the upper back. So we're doing a push-pull muscle group combination. Stay connected, eight to 12 repetitions. And remembering that these are now kind of done like sets, so it's eight to 12 of both. Renegade rows, we're obviously doing both arms, so make sure you're not just doing four sets. You row, you row, and then you do the push-up. That's one all the way up to eight to 12, wherever you're at in the circuit. Now, if you're already ahead of me, feel free to move into the next flow, which is the tall kneeling curls, then overheads, then tricep extensions. So once you're done with your eight to 12, you're gonna walk the legs in, Make sure the ankles are, again, knee distance or hip distance apart. The toes are not touching. 
go ahead and come up into your tall kneeling position. So the reason we're doing this is because you're activating the lower half of your body too. So your hamstrings and your glutes are stabilizing and engaged. So we're not kind of like just lazily sitting here. Squeeze the glutes, push the hips forward, feel the backside of your legs, tighten up those muscles engaged. And then you have eight to 12 curls. Again, make sure you're not swinging the body. Especially as your arms get tired, you might start to feel that swing. So really keep your core strong, keep your hamstrings strong and stay stable. After eight to 12 of those, you're gonna rock those weights up, squeeze the glutes, and then you have eight to 12 overheads. Now again, if you have lighter weights, feel free to double them up for the overhead tricep extension. But if you're going heavy and you can't do that because the weights get physically bigger, you can't grip it, drop down to one weight and go right into the overhead tricep extension. After you do your eight to 12 reps, that's one round. We're doing this three times. So you're right back to the top with your Renegade Row push-ups. Same amount of reps as you did in your last one. Row, row, and then a push-up. Makes me feel like I want to start seeing a row, row, row your belt. I won't do that to you though. Make sure on the push-ups, your chest is coming all the way to the floor. And if you're trying to level up with this program, after you do the rows, try to pop up on the toes for the push-up and then drop back down to the knees for the rows. So you're leveling up and still making your push-ups hard. And remember your three variations for push-ups, modified on the knees, next level on the toes with the feet are wide, giving you a big foundation. And then the next level feet are touching, making it extra, extra hard. So again, you've got your eight to 12 reps here. Then you're right back into your tall kneeling set and then we do it all again one more time. So you're working every muscle group in the upper body here. Combination moves in the push-ups and in the rows, working upper back, chest, biceps, and triceps, and shoulders. And then we're taking shoulders, biceps, and triceps and isolating them in the, in the lifts that come after. So in the tall kneeling, just make sure you've got good alignment first. Make sure the hips aren't hinging back, everything's engaged, and then you go right into your lift. Eight to 12. Feel free to shake it out between the biceps and the overhead presses. Keep the hips pushed forward. Keep the hamstrings engaged. Keep your core strong so you're not popping the lower back open. And then again, on the overheads, feel free one weight or two weights, depending on what kind of equipment you have at home. And then release. So after round two, you go right back into round three. This is it, this is our last time here. So if you haven't tried a heavier weight and you have one available, can you try it on the Renegade Rose? Or if you haven't tried the Rose on your tippy toes in a plank, can you try it and just see how it goes? So if you're coming off the knees for the Renegade Rose, just make sure the feet are wide, giving you a big foundation, core strong, and then keep your hips square to the floor as you row.
So again, eight to 12 reps, keeping your hips square to the floor, keeping your obliques strong and engaged so we're not robbing the, wobbling the hips side to side. Make sure the shoulders are down away from the ears so we're not shrugging and putting tension in the upper body. Make sure on the push-ups, even when the hands are on the weight, that they're almost like corkscrewed into those weights. So the insides of your elbows are actually facing forward. They're not facing each other. And when you go into the push-up, you wanna make like an arrow shape or a triangle shape from your head to the tips of your elbows. So also make sure you're not coming out at a 90 degree angle, but you're down here more like a 45. Eight to 12 repetitions or sets. <laughs> So really, if you're counting individual arms on the rows, you're doing anywhere between 16 and 24, but you're still only doing eight to 12 on the push-ups. So you row, row, and then do your push-up. Make sure you're not doing a push-up in between each row. I know we do man-makers, but this is very different than a man-maker. You only have one push-up, not three. And then after your eight to 12, you're right back to your final time in your tall kneeling, bicep curls, overhead press, and your overhead tricep extension. So on this third round, your hamstrings should hopefully start to feel it. Uh, round one got us familiar with the exercise, round two started to get us into the flow, and round three is really hard. So when you come into this upright position, really tuck the toes under. Really use your glutes to push the hips forward. So we don't wanna just pop the rib cage open and round here. Your chest stays right over the hips, and your glutes are actually pushing the entire upper body up and into that position. Once you're here, crown of the head up high to the sky, chest over hips, hips over knees, then you go into your lifts. You're right here for your curls, eight to 12 reps. Feel free to kind of shake it out. I know that's a lot on the toes. You should feel that big stretch through the bottom of the feet, but also your hamstrings and booty. Then you get that exact same setup. Make sure you're pushing from the glutes, from the hamstrings, and then you go right into that overhead. Now when you do the overhead, make sure knuckles are straight up to the ceiling so there's no hinging in your wrists and make sure the biceps are right next to the ears. So we don't wanna bring the weights out in front of us. They're literally staying in that same plane, straight up and down, not forward and back. And we wanna make sure the biceps are right next to the ears so the arms aren't super wide at the top of the press. And then if you're doubling up your weights, feel free from the top of the overhead press to go right into the overhead tricep extension. But if you need to drop to one weight, feel free. When you do the overhead tricep extension, make sure you're coming only down to where the forearms are parallel with the ceiling. We don't need to come all the way down here where the elbows are pointing up to the ceiling. Coming down to that parallel point is good. Keep the elbows really close together so make sure they're not super wide and focus on the back of those arms. Give you a moment to finish this third set and then shake it out. Take a moment to recover and then we're gonna move into the lower body. If you're still working upper body, don't worry, you have a couple moments, finish your sets. Grab some water, shake it out, whatever you need. Up next, we have deadlifts and squats. So now we're gonna bring your heaviest set of weights into the equation. So if you're done, just go ahead and grab those heavy weights and pull them out. So if you'll notice, if you've been doing this workout the whole entire program, there used to be two more exercises in this part, which was the tall kneeling bridges and suitcase squats. We're not doing those this time. We're just doing the sumo deadlifts and the goblet squats. So go ahead and look at your journal if you've done this workout twice before. What rep scheme did you do? Just somewhere between 12 and 15, and then do the same amount. But again, we're leveling up, so you have a heavier weight than you did the last time. So right now you're 10 pounds heavier than where you were when you first started this program. So you are getting so strong, you should be so proud of yourself. All right, it looks like most of us are done. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this set. So our sumo deadlifts, you're gonna have the feet really wide here and the toes are turned out somewhere between 10 and two and nine and three. Now a deadlift is very different from a squat. So you wanna hinge from the hips, push the hips back to the wall behind you. Now the weights can either be facing each other, palms face each other, or you can bring the heads of the weights facing each other, kind of just making one long barbell. Make sure the knees are soft, but the hip and the chest at the bottom are in the same line, so the hips aren't down here. From there, get your hands onto the weights and you're gonna pull the weights up like you're pressing the floor away, and then come right back down for your deadlift. So really working the back of the legs and the inner thighs. For your goblet squats, you only need one of your heavy dumbbells, just like a normal squat. Goblet obviously is just how you hold the weight. Feet again between 
10 and 2, 9 and 3, but they're not as wide. So choose whatever variation you want to hold the weights for the deadlifts, either parallel or perpendicular. Take the feet right next to it. So the weights are kind of like almost underneath your body. So they start super close to you. Hinge from the hips to come back into the deadlift. Grab your weights. And then from the feet, press the floor away to rise up. We're here for 12 to 15 reps. Keep making sure you're driving the tailbone back towards the wall behind you. Nice flat spine. Also make sure that the weights, especially when they get heavier and heavier, are not pulling your shoulder blades apart at the bottom and causing you to round the upper back. Deadlifts are great for working the back side of your body, but not your lower back. <laughs> so we're focusing on your posterior chain, your hamstrings and your booty, but we should not feel this in the lower back. So if you start to feel in the lower back, make sure of a couple things. Make sure the weights aren't coming out further from the body. Make sure you're not squatting and then make sure you're not rounding the spine at any point through the deadlift. So 12 to 15 reps, sumo deadlifts. And as soon as you're done, you drop one weight, you pick up the other, you hold it goblet style, narrow out your stance a little bit. And now we go into a knee hinge movement. So bending from the knees, we drop down into a squat and then we press ourselves back up. So when you do the goblet squats, make sure you're not holding the weight out super far. Bring that weight right against the chest like you're hugging it for dear life and then go ahead and drop up and down into the squat. So again, 12 to 15 reps there. Make sure you're keeping the chest up. Again, we don't want the weight to pull us forward because then you're gonna feel it in the lower back and not the quadriceps, which is what we wanna focus on. Squats, we wanna start focusing more on the front side of the body, quad dominant, but you should still feel your booty. Core is engaged so we're not popping the rib cage open. 12 to 15 reps, and then you're right back to your sumo deadlifts for rounds two and three. So really focus on your form here on round two. We went over everything in round one. So get yourself set up, tailbone back, pull your shoulders down and back, press your chest forward, shoulder blades together, and then press the floor away to lift your weight. So really strong through the lower half of your body. Your feet are like death gripping the floor. There's a slight bend in the knees, but not much. This is all about hinging from the hips. It should feel like a forward fold stretch, but obviously under more tension because we have weights. Inhale as you lower, exhale as you press back up. Keep the weight super close to your body. Twelve to 15 reps. Safely place the weights down, press yourself back up, and then step back away from the weights. Then once you're ready, you're gonna pick those weights back up. One weight, holding a goblet style, going right into your squats, 12 to 15 repetitions. So make sure too, when you're squatting, that the feet are a little bit wider than hips distance. So make sure they're not super wide. And again, the feet are somewhere between 10 and two and nine and three. So we don't want the feet to be totally parallel, facing forward, rotate them out. So your toes are like facing the hands, or the hands on a clock facing the numbers. Make sure your core is nice and strong, especially as you're lowering and lifting into your squat. When we rise up from the squat, we don't wanna let that rib cage start to pop and have this little expansion through the lower back. Even without weight, when you kind of just demo that, it doesn't feel good. So it should not feel like that, especially when you've got those weights and keep holding that weight super close to you because if it starts to come out, it's gonna force you to round. And again, that's just gonna hurt the lower back. So 12 to 15 reps, safely put the weight down, squat or deadlift, get it there. Especially if you're starting to go heavier and heavier with this program, we don't wanna just fold forward to drop the weights. And then when you're ready, round three, sumo deadlifts and then goblet squats. And if you have heavier weights and you haven't tried it yet, as you move into round three for your uh, sumo deadlifts, can you try a heavier weight? Just see how it goes. Whenever you're ready, you're right into it, round three. So again, as you come into that round three, make sure you approach the weights. The feet start very close to the dumbbells. It's kind of like um, the dumbbells are almost literally right underneath your pelvic floor because that's how close we want them. If this was a barbell, the barbell would actually make contact with the body and drag up the body the entire deadlift. At the top, make sure you're not like pulling the weights up 
or you're not pushing the hips forward <laughs> and kind of rounding here. All you're gonna do, the weights are in a dead hang, you're just gonna come up to stand, the legs are, are nice and strong, locked out, and then you come back into that deadlift and then rise back up. So at the top, you do activate the glutes, you squeeze them, but it's not like a pelvic press forward. We're not doing that and putting that in the lower back. You're just in an upright position, like you're in a vertical plank, and the glutes are engaged because that's the muscle group that we're working. As soon as you're done with 12 to 15, you have your goblet squats, and then you're done with the legs. So I hope you went heavy. <laughs> We've got some people shaking it out, so I know that your grip strength is being challenged. <laughs> which is beautiful because that means that you're really going heavy and you're having to challenge yourself just to hold the weight. So nice job. If the lower back starts to feel it, really make sure you're focusing on your core strength. So it's kind of like, imagine someone's gonna come up and punch you in the gut. Hopefully that doesn't actually happen. But that's the kind of braced abdominals you wanna have. So you're really strong through your core. And it's really easy, especially as you start to get tired or when you're in the middle of uh, squatting down or up to kind of let that go. So try to keep your focus the entire time on the way to the bottom of the squat and up. So you're keeping that core strong and stable for the entire squat, not just at the bottom and not just at the top, but right there in the middle as you're flowing between the two as well. Because that's typically when we tend to let the abdominals go and then we try to re-catch them at the bottom or re-catch them at the top. But for that whole squat, our lower back has been holding the weight for us. So keep your core nice and strong throughout the squat. Focus on it, think about it the entire squat. And then whenever you're done, make sure to safely set your weights off to the side, squat or deadlift them down, especially if you were going super heavy. And then we have one more set. So you see it in your chat, or if you're doing this on YouTube later, it's in the description below. We now have three rounds, eight to 12 reps. This is where your lighter weight is gonna come into play because we're gonna have long levers and we're gonna be doing um, a lot of repetitions back, back, back. So we have five different moves. Your first one is a front raise. The palms are gonna face each other with the dumbbells. You're gonna raise the weights all the way up. Um, shoulder height, make sure you don't come up higher than the shoulders. At the top, make sure the shoulder blades are pulled down and back. Your core is strong, you're nice and stable. So eight to 12 reps, same amount as you did on the previous two rounds, but you, you guessed it, a heavier weight. So go ahead and grab your weight. Make sure your feet are about hips distance apart. Feet are nice and firmly planted into the floor. Soften the knees, core is engaged. And then we lift and lower the arms, eight to 12 repetitions. As you do this, really avoid swinging the body front to back. <laughs> if you're doing this, you're not gonna get anything from it, except maybe some ski practice, but come on, it's almost summer, so forget <laughs> that. So just go ahead, stay nice and stable, focus on just the arms. Now I know in this program, our focus is to keep going heavier and heavier. But if you find that you're having to swing the body to do the heavier weight, it's okay to go back to the lighter weight, whatever you are at round two. We want to focus on good form, not just going heavier because we want to go heavier. After your front raises, don't drop your weights. We go right into our bicep curls so your palms face away from you. Eight to 12 reps here. Make sure the elbows are staying directly underneath the shoulders. So we don't want the elbows to come forward. The elbows stay right under the shoulders as you curl. The bottom half of you is in that same position. Feet are digging into the mat, knees are soft, but your core is engaged. We're not gonna move or transition from here. Hold on to the weights as soon as you're done with your bicep curls. Hinge from the hips, just like you did on the um, deadlifts. And then we're going right into our tricep kickbacks. So the elbows are higher than your back. The hands are staying super close together. So make sure they're like not going out wide to the corners. Core is strong to protect you and you're focusing on the back, the arms, the triceps. When you're done with the tricep kickback, stay in your hinge position. You're gonna let the weights hang low, turn the palms to face the body, and we're going right into our wide rows. So when you come into the wide rows, make sure the elbows are going out wide, the wrists are right underneath the elbows, but the elbows are also going back. So they're not in line with the shoulders up here, but they're like trying to press to the back wall behind you. Eight to 12 reps for the wide rows. As soon as you're done with that, don't drop your weights. You're gonna stand up. We're gonna bring the weights into a W position, like your head's the tip of the W. Palms are facing away from you. You press all the way out to a Y position and back to W, that's one. Out and in, that's two. So eight to 12 reps. So the arms are actually going out further from the body. So we wanna make sure we're not just doing an overhead press. 
So at the top, you're making like a big Y with your body, and at the bottom, you're making that W. So as the arms go out further from the body, it's gonna be harder. You're gonna feel your shoulders and your biceps especially. So really stabilize to the feet, stabilize to the core, eight to 12 reps, YW. Once you're done with your first round, drop the weights, shake it out. Then we get to do that two more times. Use round one kind of as feedback. How do you do? If you feel like you had to swing the body to achieve any of those lifts, grab a lighter weight so you can do this next set with really good form. That way you can keep actually getting stronger and not causing injuries. Take another moment here, shake it out because you know we're gonna do all five back to back, getting a nice good arm burnout. All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab your weights again. Feet are under the hips. Feet are digging into the floor hard. Knees are soft, core's engaged. Hips and ribs are pulling towards each other. Tuck the chin to your chest and front raises eight to 12 repetitions. Exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. Once you do your eight to 12, you're right into those bicep curls. So don't adjust anything, just turn the palms away from you and then curl the weights. Keep the elbows under the shoulders, still exhale as you curl, inhale as you extend. Eight to 12 reps. As soon as you're done with those, don't drop the weights. Hinge from the hips, pull the elbows up and back, and then right into your tricep kick back. Don't come out of your hinge, drop the hands so that the palms are facing towards you, and then right into those wide rows. Stay in your hinge position. Make sure you're not starting to round the back. And as soon as you're done, get those weights up. Make that W, you might need to widen the feet for bigger foundation, and then you're right into your YWs. Picking up the pace a little bit. <laughs> so we're not kind of hanging out here for a minute, giving the arms a break. It's one, two, come on, three, four. Here's eight. And 12. Whew, release, shake it out. We get to do that one more time. <laughs> so give the arms a break. Hopefully you're starting to get fatigued through the upper body. This whole circuit is designed for that burnout. <laughs> so by now, I hope you need the recovery. If you can still like lift and you're ready to go, might be time to grab a heavier weight. So use it as feedback. If you're like, I could have done like 20 more reps, <laughs> you need a heavier weight. Roll the shoulders, take a couple more seconds here, and then get ready. We're doing that whole thing one more time. So grab your weight. Feet are under the hips, soft knees, strong core. Tuck the chin, front raise, here we go. After your eight to 12 bicep curls. After your eight to 12, don't drop, hinge from the hips, palms face in, roll them up and then kick back. Don't come out of your hinge position when you're done with the kickbacks, you're white into your ride rows. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then our last one, <laughs> quick tempo, no rest, <laughs> YWs. Here we go. Take them wide, take them wide. 
There's eight. There's 10. There's 12. Whoo, nice job. Release the weights. Roll out the shoulder and shake it out. All right, real quick. I think that's almost there. All right, that's everybody. So real quick, get into a high plank. No rest, no rest. Shoulders over wrists. Inner thighs are zipped together. Heels are pressing back like you're pushing the ball behind you. Your butt's not up. Your hips aren't sagging. You're nice and neutral. Corkscrew the hands into the mat so the insides of your elbows are actually facing forward. Pull the crown of the head to the wall in front of you so you're not gazing straight down between the thumbs, but you're gazing about 12 to 18 inches in front of you. I know that this is hard because you just burned out your arm. And now I'm asking you to stay into a plank for 60 seconds to really burn out those shoulders. So you're about 20 seconds in, stay with it. Keep the core nice and strong. Make sure you're not starting to um, shrug the shoulders up towards the ears. Find that space, find that lengthening in the neck. You're past your halfway point. Stay with it. <laughs> right back into it. Corkscrew those hands into the mat, inside the elbows facing forward. Core is strong, 15 seconds. Breathe, 10 seconds. Come on, you're almost there. Five seconds, three, two, and release, shake it out, nice job. All right, we have a very brief um, ab circuit to finish class today. So go ahead and come all the way down onto your backs. We're gonna start on the right side. So um, bring the right knee into the chest. Your left leg can stay bent on the floor or you can straighten it out, whatever feels more comfortable for your hips. Um, for me, that's a bent leg, so whatever feels better for you. Right arm reaches overhead. So we're gonna pull the elbow and the knee together as we lift the upper body off the mat, making a contraction. And then inhale, extend. Exhale, contract. Inhale, extend. So making sure to keep the lower back connected with the floor the entire time. The upper body comes with the arm as it contracts in. So make sure you're crunching, thinking chest towards ribs rather than just like lifting the head up because we don't want to put tension in the neck. We want to make sure that this is just a crunch through the right side abdominals, the upper abs, the obliques, the lower abs, the transverse abdominis all on the right side. And now your next goal is to get the elbow and the knee to actually make contact. So get those out that elbow and that knee to touch. If you have to bring the knee in closer or you have to get the elbow up higher, whatever you need, make that contact touch and then keep contracting and extending. Three more here, two, and now make that contact hold. So your elbow is touching that knee. You're making that connection. You're squeezing in the abdominals to find that strength. Your lower back is staying flush with the mat, so make sure it's not popping up. So pull the abdominals down towards the spine. Find a little um, bigger range of motion. Lift the chest a little higher. Make contact, stay with the contact. If you start to drift away, reconnect. Stay with it, breathe for five, for three, for two, and really. So hopefully your right side got really fired up. So we're gonna do the same thing on the left. So right leg again can be straight or you can keep it bent. Left knee over the hip, left arm extends out. Take a nice deep inhale and then exhale, contract. Inhale, extend. So when you're extending and the arm and leg are straight out, make sure you're not starting to lift that lower back and feeling the rib cage start to expand. Pull the rib cage down and in towards the belly button and then press the belly button down towards the spine. So you have big contact between the lower back and the mat. So that way we're not putting any of this in the lower back. We want to focus on the left sides of your abdominals. So exhale, contract, inhale, extend. Now start to make that contact if you're not there already. So get the elbow and the knee to actually make contact, to physically touch one another as you contract. Also, if you haven't already checked it out, we are releasing Pilates videos. So if you like this ab work, make sure you check out our Pilates series because <laughs> you'll get tons of ab work in your Pilates classes. On the next one, when you pull yourself up, make contact and hold. So elbow and knee are actually physically touching. Stay with it, breathe. Keep the core strong, keep the abs scooped in. 
If it starts to drift away, reconnect. Use your abs to pull the body together for three, for two, and really. Ooh, hopefully your left side got fired up. We did one side, we did the other side. Now we're gonna do them both, unilateral to bilateral work. So take the arms overhead, bring the knees into the chest. Make sure the lower back maintains contact with the floor. Take a nice deep inhale here. Exhale, elbows tap the knees. Inhale, extend. So this time as you extend, if the lower back starts to pop up, don't take your legs as close to the floor. Maybe instead of extending the legs out, you just straighten the legs. So you make that contraction, you extend the legs out straight. Whatever you need to maintain that lower back connection with the mat to keep your abdominal strong and your lower back protected. But if you can make that contact and extend out, go for it. Exhale and inhale. Really make sure they're making contact, they're touching. Last three, last two, no break. Make them touch, hold. So knees to elbows, touch, 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 touch. You can do this, stay with it. You lift from the lower abs to get the knees up higher. You lift from the upper abs to get the elbows up higher. Hold, breathe, make that contraction. Make that connection, elbow to knee. Stay with it, come on. Stay for 10. Stay for eight. Six, make that connection. If it's starting to come apart, come on, come on, come on. Four, three, two, and collapse. <laughs> nice job. Woo, I hope your abdominals felt that, mine sure did. So go ahead and flip it over. We're gonna stretch out those abs. So hands under shoulders, let the hips drop. Open up the chest, untuck the toes, stretch it out. Nice job. Breathe. Just let the abdominal stretch out. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, just sit the hips back onto the heels. Leave the arms long so you feel the stretch through the upper back, through the arms. Keep your hips square as you walk the hands to the left side of your mat. Feeling a big side body stretch through the right side of your body. Pull your right hip back towards the right heel. Really find that length. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale, walk it over to the left side. Push the left hip towards the left heel. Big side body stretch to the left. Slowly walk the hands back in. Come into tabletop. Float the left knee from the floor. Reach the right arm back to grab the left foot and then stretch out that quadricep by pushing the foot into the hand. So you're opening up the shoulder on the right side and you're stretching the quadricep on the left. Balancing through the right leg and the left arm. Slowly release the left, release the right hand. Float the right leg, reach the left arm back to grab that foot. Press the foot into the hand by pulling the heel away from the glute. Feel the quadricep stretch and then feel the shoulder opening on the left side. and then slowly release and have a seat. All right, you made it week 22. So next week, week 23, we are crushing this program. Um, we're gonna have seven more weeks. So until next week, until Monday, have a great day.